<laughs> too late now. <laughs> hey, everybody. It looks like we're live. A happy Wednesday, everyone. Did you bring your drinks to your live to our live stream? There you go. So you can listen in. Because mm -hmm. we brought ours. It's happy hour. You have to bring your drinks. And so then you can sit back and enjoy and chat with us. Speaking of which, if you have questions, we would love to answer them. So drop them in the chat. And then we'll talk a little bit about a couple articles. Um, and then we'll answer your questions after to that. Answer them. Oh, so don't sorry. <laughs> we listen to ourselves. Or we can listen to ourselves. I didn't know my phone was going to do that. <laughs> All right. Let me see. So wanted to talk to you. I, I don't know if you remember... Um, you were here last week and we talked about um, how we have like buying forces in the market right now. So we have, you know, on the one hand, we've got all this new construction coming in. And I've actually that's in one of the articles um, that we're reading today as right. well. Um, and so we've yeah, got that just really, really in the excerpts, like in your landlocked cities. Not so much. I don't really see it. Hmm. Um, so you've got all this new construction coming in, which should cause like big price drops. Right. And it is to some degree. Um, but then you've also got companies and people moving in. Lots and of people. Lots of people. I know like, you know, we work a lot with relocators and, mm -hmm. and they're coming in from all over the world. So, um, so, so those vying forces. And so like, in my mind, I'm always like, what's going on in the market? You know, knowing that we've got these two, <laughs> these two forces that we're thinking about. Um, and so I wanted to show you guys this article, a couple of articles that I found. Um, this first one is called Texas Homeowners are struggling to sell their houses. Um, and it was published April 8th. So we're talking about a pretty recent mm -hmm. article here. Um, it says homeowners in Austin, Dallas, and Houston are struggling to sell their homes. In Dallas, 51% of home listings above 2 million did not sell. So this isn't just talking about right. like they lowered their prices. They just plumb the listings expired. They just didn't sell. Um, against 36% of homes priced between 1 million and 2 million, 37% listed for 800,000 to 1 million, some 35% of homes priced between 450 and 800 went wow. unsold in the same period, uh, against 38% of those rated 300 to 450. And this one really surprised me. 31% of those priced 300,000 and under. Wow. Okay. So like, I know that really surprised me because that's like a highly liquid price yeah. range here. I can, I'm not surprised with the million and two million. Yeah, exactly. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would expect mm -hmm. it of the more expensive ones, but yeah, these $300,000 mm -hmm. ones, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> why, why would we see that? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the highest unsold rates were for the most expensive properties, of course, of course right? Which is what you just said. Um, the rate of unsold homes could be explained by buyers waiting for better opportunities. As the home uh, buying season heats up, it could be. I mean, if they're waiting because they want to move closer to the summer, right? I mean, that makes sense. Um, an increase in inventory in the state, mainly due to the fact that Texas, okay, here, you know, here's our thing here, has been building more new homes than almost every other in the country, <laughs> is also contributing to bringing prices modestly down. And I think, modestly. you know, that's, I mean, I, I think that that is really a good uh, summary there is the fact that it is bringing prices down, but it's modest because of those like those mm -hmm. buying forces again. Um, let's see, the surge in inventory and associated decline in home prices that has started in some Texas metros is great news for home buyers across the state. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, who's going to say that's bad news, right? Um, so another article, Texas house prices slashed in multiple cities. This one published April 11. So again, we're talking a week. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a week ago. So these are very current articles. We're not talking about the dead of winter when we would expect it to be slow. Anyway, we're talking about like right now. Um, really, these would be mm -hmm. like March. You know, yeah. they'd be looking at March. March right. So. Let's look at this one. As of Thursday morning, there were a total of 194, 887,000 properties, including single and multifamily homes, condos, lots and apartments listed for sale. Some 35,179 of these properties have had a price reduction since first being hmm. listed. So prices definitely coming down. Um, Fort Worth had a total of 2831 properties listed for sale on Zillow, 625 of which had a price reduction. Okay, that means that the city had the highest rate in the state 
of listed properties with a price reduction at 30%. Hmm. Okay. So Fort Worth, yeah. Opportunity Knox. <laughs> um, Dallas followed suit with 27% of <clears throat> homes listed for sale on Zillow having a price reduction. Uh, the drop in prices across Texas is mostly due to the fact that the state has been building more, more new homes. homes than most of the country. So we hear this and we hear this and we hear this new construction everywhere. We have a lot of room. <laughs> we have room to spread out and all we the builders build have everywhere. come. Yeah, all the builders have come. Uh, let's see here now. There were approximately 217,000 total housing units that were started in Texas over 2023. Nick Gurley, founder and CEO of the Real Estate Reventure app, previously told Newsweek that Texas is turning into a buyer's market, adding that he wouldn't be surprised if things continue to get better for Texas buyers in 2024. Hmm. I would say, you know, experientially, um, I don't know. What do you think? I think we're seeing like a mixed bag. Yeah. You know, I think it's hard to say that yet. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you some of our buyers are having we're having great success negotiating yeah. for them. And then some were going into multiple offers and so, we have to act fast. Yeah, somehow we're seeing some houses within a week mm -hmm. are going to multiple offers and they're gone. And then we're seeing some where they had lots of choices to look at. It really just depends on location, price range. And yeah. Yeah. We're still, yeah. still early yet. Well, and I, and I think like our hottest ones are the ones that are landlocked with super high rated yeah. schools. You know, so for, the ones and also the ones that are a short Allen, commute. Plano. Yeah, like Allen, A plus schools, you know. Prosper. Yeah. Um, so so you're seeing some that are still like going really high, but then others really anywhere there's like a lot of new construction. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're really gonna see a lot of price adjustments. And then if, as you further go out and the schools aren't as great, then you really, really see those price uh, adjustments. Okay, let's see where were we. I think that was at the end of that one. Okay, so um, interesting thing I wanted to tell you. I, I really, I think the big comment here has to do with the new construction. And so, I wanted to, um, I wanted to show you this article. Okay, because I think this one is really interesting. Uh, I love it. Blue, Blue states, states are creating, <laughs> are creating a housing market crisis. Hmm. So that's a, a very interesting. That's not political. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So blue states are creating a housing market crisis. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve in this one. Um, in the midst of a lingering affordability crisis in the United States housing market, red states like Texas have been successfully building or starting to build millions of new homes in the past few years. Yeah. Texas has achieved the highest number of new homes built in the past few years, Prices have recently been dropping, which has delighted potential home buyers. We need like a sound effect Always for nice. like cheering. Woo! Hard see. drop. Yep, yep. <laughs> Texas has built many more homes than California over many years. And that's according to Lawrence Yun. Um, in the two years, some 116,693 single family home permits were issued in California out of a total of 221,983. I love this. In the same period, Texas issued 293,569 single family home permits out of a total of 477,825, mm -hmm. more than double those issued wow. in the Golden State. More than double. Wow. In the past 10 years, California issued a total of 1,069,096 permits, of which 555,000 were for single family homes, while Texas issued. 2,017,652. I feel like I'm in math class here yeah. having to read all these big numbers, uh, but definitely Texas doing so much more. Texas and Florida are the two states that in absolute terms have started construction on the most units mm -hmm. in 2023. By our estimate, there were approximately 217,000 total housing units started in Texas over 2023. Okay, so definitely getting the point here, lots and lots going on. Um, yeah. Another number of permits issued for the construction of new homes is mostly due to the fact that the state has less regulation for building than states like California, hmm. Yen said. Um, for Walsh, the number of new homes built in Texas also reflects the fact that the state has more construction workers and construction and labor costs are lower hmm. than in New York or California. Additionally, he said, Less restrictive zoning laws in Texas make starting new residential construction easier, 
above all demand fundamentals are much stronger in Texas than California or New York. Um, I know well, I, what were you saying? I was going to say, there's just a lot more places though to, you can easily change a zone to residence. You, know, you get huge yeah. amounts of big land out. Mm -hmm. so, and, but, and one thing too, that I, um, I did a video on this a couple months back is that there's a big push to lighten up on zoning even more. Like mm -hmm. it's going through the legislature that they're like, oh, we've got this housing shortage. Let's lighten it up, lighten mm -hmm. it up, make it easier. Um, another thing they've really been pushing for is like making it more high density housing, lower lot lines. Mm -hmm. Like right now, mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of 40s, you know, are roughly your smallest one, unless it's a town home, and they're pushing for it to be 30s, mm -hmm. right? So they're like, let's get more in there. Let's let's cram a few more in there. And so, let I me mean, talk about lenient, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to make it even more lenient. So let's get some more thing. Let's get some more things right. in there. Um, Interesting. So um, let's see here now. Uh, what else? Texas was among the four fastest growing states in the nation last year, while California and New York lost residents. Builders are sensitive to these local demographic trends when making investment decisions. Um, so I would say I think that we're definitely seeing that um, for sure, that it's we're seeing these housing market um, things. But and I see we've got one comment and we're going to read our comments later but i do see chris pure wrote where is it falling i see no change so lucky for you me being the data nerd that i am i have slides <laughs> <laughs> because i love my slides there are numbers someplace yes there are numbers okay so at first i thought you know okay so if they're saying the prices are truly <clears throat> dropping right where would we see that mm -hmm. and my thought was like we would see it on the percentage of sales price accepted right and so um and so i kind of took a look at that across four major counties and and what this data slide shows is it shows the percentage of original list price, right? So like during COVID, we saw like numbers 110%, you know, um, in that post COVID area. So, mm -hmm. you know, percentage of original list price. And that told us that right. people were offering like that much above the list price. And so as we go through all four of these, we're going to see that nobody is paying Negative. all of list price, yeah. you know? So the, the first column shows the percentage of original list price. The second column shows how much of a change that is year over year. And so we're going to see that this is not a really aggressive change. Um, it's it's slightly positive, slightly negative. Um, but in Denton County, pre-owned homes are selling. And, and, and we're going to get to this in just a minute. But I want to talk to you about how the pre-owned and the new construction different. are different. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason I separated them on here because I want to show you that. Um, pre-owned homes in Denton County, 98.6% on average of what's being accepted, you know, so not a hundred percent that nobody's paying, you know, like a hundred percent. Well, I say nobody, but on average it's 98. And then if you look at new construction, 95.8%. So we can see that pre-owned homes are selling for higher, you know, of yeah. the percentage of list price than the new construction. Um, in Collin County, 98.7%. 96.6%. I wonder if any of that has to do with there's probably more new construction sales than there are pre-owned sales right now also though. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that is true. That's a good point. And you have a little bit more of a scarcity effect in your pre-owned right. neighborhoods. True. Yeah. In Dallas County, 98%, 96.1%. And check out Rockwall County. Pre-owned is 96.7%. New construction, 94.6%. So you want to think about where you can go and make mm -hmm. a lower offer, man, you want to head to Rockwall yeah. County, you know, hmm. and, and there's some good schools there like Rockwall mm -hmm. ISD. You've got some really good schools there and you've got affordability. <clears throat> so like, in fact, the entire county of Rockwall scored, you know, an A with yep. the Texas Education Agency. So you've got, you know, it's a tiny county. So that's not like as yeah, hugely yeah. <laughs> impressive as you might think, but still like they, you know, the entire thing got an A plus. And you've got Rockwall, which has got some beautiful homes. McClendon Chisholm. That's a really nice area. That is a really yeah. nice area. Um, and, and you're not that far from Rockwall where you yeah. get all your needs met. You know, um, one of my things I like about Rockwall is it's self-sustaining, mm -hmm. right? It's got your shopping. It's not many malls, but it's got all the retail you need. You know, it's got a movie theater. It's got mm -hmm. some nice restaurants. It's got your Home Depot. You got your Kohl's. Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. You got the nice little harbor. Lake. Um, so Golf there. Golf courses. Okay, yeah, you do have golf courses, especially in Heath. You've got a really neat community there. Heath is really neat too. All like custom built. So if you ever mm -hmm. just want to see like some fun, unique architecture that's like completely off the beaten path of your cookie cutter approach, um, go to yeah. Heath. <laughs> and you got these rolling hills and you've got these houses that are just completely unique and they don't look like each other, um, other than the one by the golf club. 
there yeah, is the one all, that's yeah. that's more of a cookie cutter. Um, but yeah, you, so you've got some really neat ones there and look at 94%, seriously. Okay. So, so opportunity there, um, 94% of offers. So, I mean, like math wise, you know, what is that $300,000 home? What are you getting that for? I don't know, whatever 94% of that is, <laughs> but you can get some good deals in Rockwall right now. You said a 300,000? Yeah. So like if it's a $300,000 home, maybe you're buying like in Royce city or something like that. So but with 94% of that. Off, I mean. So. Yeah, so eighteen thousand. I mean, or yeah, yeah. And actually, um, we have been in the middle of this week. We got one under contract in Royce City, and we were able mm -hmm. to be really successful with our negotiations. Um, and whenever you know, we kind of the the sales consultant was like, "Well, you know, we've given all we can give." <clears throat> um, I told her, "Well, you know, uh, there's a lot to choose from in Royce City, so um, maybe we'll just you know we need to keep looking." Yeah. And, 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 you know, and then I was like, Hey, we're, listen, we're only this many thousand off from where we want to be. So, you know, she's like, well, my, you know, the builders come down and I was like, well, you know, you've got a lot of competition here. And, um, and then the next morning, you know, she texted over, go. Hey, we've accepted your we offer. Um, and so we got it. So yeah. And they're just starting to build in some of those areas too. So mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Roy city has a ton, More ton. Um, Roy city has a ton. Fate has a lot, not Fate's as much. Similar. Um, yeah. yeah. Smaller. But, yeah. And I've talked about how fate, my Some favorite. Some of it's in Rockwall. I, yes. I, yeah. He, you got it. That's one of my favorite things about fate. Affordable in Rockwall ISD. So you want to stick on the west side of fate. Um, but yeah, so you've got some good deals going on there in, um, in Rockwall County. Um, but I wanted to show you how this looks in real time. And I think our point being here and like the title of the video was like, is this a really great opportunity or is this like new construction hype? Right. And that was a big part. And I think you can well, already tell. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, I think you can already tell looking at the numbers that it shows all the new construction builders have come down more. Yeah. Right. So I want to show you like a snapshot of what we see when we right. look on the MLS. OK, so this is what it looks like when we look but at the MLS. Start, yes, that's the big question. <laughs> um, so when we on our MLS, when we pull up and this is just a snapshot of Salina um, and you see all those arrows. I don't know if you guys can see those some ups and some downs. Okay. So this is new construction and you can see raising prices in some places, lowering prices in others. And overall, you can just see a lot of activity. I mean, was that more than half of those listings right there mm -hmm. have either price drops or price increases. Okay. So this is like a snapshot of what you see with new construction, right? They're strategists, mm -hmm. right? They're going to, they're going to change things a lot. Um, you're going to see them move the prices around a lot of price mm -hmm. shuffling. Right. Whereas like, and, 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 and this I think is very telling. You don't see this as much with pre-owned homes. And the reason is, okay, not the necessarily the reason, but if you think about it, the realtor is going to give a market analysis. And if the realtor suggests that you like way over list, the realtor never gets paid. Right. And so mm -hmm. they have a motivation to, you know, to, to price it fairly um, as opposed to, you know, so you've got, you know, a, like an individual selling their home, trusting their realtor, right? And then you've got um, these new construction sales consultants where it's all business. They might be dealing with hundreds, some you know, smaller builders, maybe hundreds, bigger builders, thousands of homes, right? And so you see instead like this shuffling. Um, so I want to show you, you know, what that looks like. This is what it looks like. You can see new construction. You see how much more activity there is, right? Um, and now I'm going to show you pre-owned, same area, Salina, same price range, okay? Okay. Um, see how much less activity there is, right? So with the new construction, you see a lot of shuffling, like more than half of those are, mm -hmm. are either they're going down or they're going up. And then you look at the percentages, right? You just got a lot of shuffling. Um, and then here, just a lot less, just mm -hmm. a lot less. And that's because the pre-owns is just, yeah, yeah, less than half, more of a stable market. They just got it sitting there, right? And so big difference there. And 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 again, that's, that's what we see. Um, and, and I actually want to show you this. I've got another slide that shows you um okay so when i talk about like smoke and mirrors okay i want to show you guys this because i have this slide that really defines it and and i only you know showed two but they're all over the place right. okay so this is what we see a lot um and, and what i'm about to show you okay this is why you never get like fomo and you don't get <laughs> emotional all right because that's the whole reason they do it okay so you guys are you ready to see this okay so this is a property in Aubrey, 
Okay, now if you see, if you look, I highlighted. Now this is, again, this is what we see in the MLS. Okay, so I'm looking at the pricing history. Um, and you can see like it was initially priced at 746, 746,000, right? Then they had a price increase. Okay, so 784. Okay, so we went from 746 mm -hmm. to 784. Okay, then we had another price increase. We went from 784 to 792. Okay, so now we've raised roughly 50 grand. Okay, so then we go from 792 to 747. So you see that online and you're like, whoa, <laughs> big price reduction. Okay, big price reduction because they just dropped price 50 grand. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. And so, but, but this is what I want you to see. This is the same price. Yeah. <laughs> what they started at is the same price. They started at 746 and they're at 747. Okay. So actually, arguably it's actually gone up. Okay. But that's not what you see. What you see is like, oh my goodness, look at this, you know, price drop. We've gone from 792. Yep. And so you have somebody that, you know, has bragging rights that, right. And they're going to feel really good about what they bought. You know, they're going to be like, right. they're going to be bragging to their neighbors. Look at that big price drop we yeah. had. Um, All right. You go back to the slide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Up here mm -hmm. in March right here. That's when the home completed. Oh, is that right? Interesting. So well, they just... I'm sure that's that's what mm -hmm. they do. Well, it's, it they're just... still building here. Or Although it was pretty under close, contract right there. Pretty close. Well, it was under contract in December. So. Yeah. Well. Pending and went yep, back yep. active. And then back to active. Somebody didn't go through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they do that a lot, though. They, well, yeah, they raise the price, raise the price, raise the price. It gets, gets completed. It's not under contract, and then they lower it. Right. So they have this history of building up the price, building up the price, and then by the time yeah. it's ready, when they're losing money and they're the most motivated, let's get this house under contract, right? Yeah. Then they will tell you. You will walk into the model home, and you will be like. Um, Hey, you know, the sales consultant will be like, Hey, you know, we just did this big price reduction. You got to look at this yeah. one. Right. But you have to remember Go it really isn't yeah. a price reduction at all. Okay. Here's another example. All right. This is another one in Aubrey started out at 749,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they raised the price to 760. All right. So we're talking what 11,000, mm -hmm. you know, um, then from 760 to 798. Okay. So now we've gone from basically, you know, basically 50,000 again. Um, and then boom, big price reduction, yeah. 798 to 753. Okay. And again, this is where your FOMO kicks in. You're like, oh my gosh, what a great deal I've got. I got to buy mm -hmm. this house right now. And, and the sales consultant's going to feed that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be like, yeah, we just did this huge price reduction. You got to jump on this. Okay. But now you well, guys. <laughs> yeah. You talk to them. What they're going to say is they're going to say, well, and you're trying to you're showing them that well these other houses are didn't sell for this much you're mm -hmm. selling you know the the comps are not showing and they're gonna say well but we already took that that price off we already took mm -hmm, that off. Mm -hmm. yeah wow. like you can actually you'll be able to actually <laughs> look on the comps and be able to show that that's not even that great of a deal yeah. oh and 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 but really if you compare this this is actually a price increase yeah okay so while you're getting FOMO, like, oh my gosh, like it dropped 50 grand, <laughs> you actually are paying five grand more than what they started with. Okay. So it's really 749 to 753. Um, now I didn't do this here, but when I've done these comparisons in the past, I'll go in and actually do a market analysis and you'll find out that it was actually all along. It was worth maybe the 749, right? Um, and so yeah. they just, they, they raised it knowing it, you know, only an idiot's going to pay this price maybe, <laughs> but then, huh. you know, I mean, maybe somebody will, well, but they it's got not, an extra you know, 4,000 out of it. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think the real strategy here, they're very strategic mm -hmm. and they want you to have like this emotional response, um, feeling like, I mean, everybody wants to know they got a good deal. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's something very validating about feeling like you got a good deal. Um, but then if we take this back to those articles we read too, when, you know, we, we see them talking about these big price drops, you kind of have to take that into consideration yeah. too. Where are they looking there? If they're looking at from the list price at the time, then yes. Mm -hmm. that's... So, so for example, if you see um, like a housing crash video that says, you know, Dallas is seeing price drops up to 50,000. Well, sure they are. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, you know, is it really 50,000? Yeah. Right. Because this is a fifty thousand dollar price drop right here. Seven ninety eight to seven fifty three. 
that is a fifty thousand dollar price drop. They're not lying. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's where just was it before. Yeah, it's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. Um, so I think overall, pre-owned homes are a better indicator, you know, of like mm -hmm. valid, you know, where they started high, drop, drop, drop. Um, but yeah, yeah, fake drop is what what Oso says. Yeah, and so that's exactly what it is. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors. So. Part of what feeds the housing crash videos is this smoke and mirrors and the builders kind of kind of feed this idea. Um, Pre-owns are definitely going to be more indicative um, of price drops. And I think still we still are seeing price drops in some areas, certainly um, in your pre-owns. Um, and, and when you've just got this massive amount of new construction, like um, like the one in Roy City, we were able to completely negotiate yeah. down. Um, I think we started at... 355 we got down to 345 with a six percent allowance towards mm -hmm. the buyer's closing cost so cool. that was a pretty considerable drop for that price range um so you can get the prices down but the, i think the big thing here is um i know you as an individual without a realtor you really can't get access to this data but i'm telling you it is vital and that is you have to know sold homes you've got to have that sold yeah. home data um well and it's going to you gonna look in the areas to see how much inventory, how much, how many homes are for sale mm -hmm. in those areas, and that's where they're gonna be. And especially if there's a bunch of new construction, also pre-owned selling against new construction. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, knowing that market analysis is huge yep. because that market analysis cuts through the hype. <laughs> and I have been, I say that to the well. That's the first thing we do when our when our buyers are like, we've narrowed it down to this and this home. You know, um, that's the first thing we do is we'll tell them this is what it's actually worth. This is what this that you know the builders have been accepting. These are the actual values, um, and we can cut through that hype, <laughs> and we call the builders on the carpet. You know, we're usually, I mean, we're very nice about it. There's no reason to be confrontational, but but we're like, Why you know, we don't. You know, it's, it's 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 we'll just say, you know, hey, I don't see that this price is supported. You know, and they might be like, well, we just dropped price fifty thousand, and 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 I'm like, well, you know, can you show me? Like you know, because yeah, because what I'm seeing is that it's actually worth your current price that that your price drop is kind of meaningless. So we have that conversation based on the data. I don't know if they necessarily like that. I think yeah. they <laughs> probably rather not uh, have us pesky realtors giving off the <laughs> bringing up the sales. Um, we got a home uh, under contract with Lennar this past weekend, and there was a lot of time pressure. And Lennar is not mm. super realtor friendly. They really, they'll say on their website that they really don't think, you know, that realtors are necessary. Um, and they kept putting on these deadlines, like these 24 hour mm. deadlines. Um, and sometimes like eight hour deadlines, you know, like our, our buyers went there and they said, if you sign by tonight, then, yeah. we'll give you this discount. Right. And so that puts the, the burden on us to be like, we have to stop everything and get to a market analysis. So, so we're always kind of like, hang on no matter how much pressure they put on let's look at the data we gotta yeah. look at the data and they're going to put the pressure on yep. <laughs> they're really good at it the minute you walk in the door they're going to mention five that just went under contract this weekend and that they have a special that's ending tomorrow <laughs> that's typically <laughs> what you're going to hear um so they're going to give you a lot of pressure and they're going to tell you you're getting a really good deal mm -hmm. okay maybe you're getting a good deal and your good deal's about to go away. And you're getting you know, that's the thing. We just dropped 50 grand and it's gonna be gone tomorrow because we're oh we're you know, corporate is having us raise prices. Mm -hmm. We're raising prices. You hear that one a lot too. Uh, and and they're not lying. You looked at the data, they are raising prices. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not lying. It's just that then they lower them again, you know. So it's just this like I said, it's 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 smoke and mirrors. It really is. Uh all right, we have we have a lot of a lot of comments here. Let's see here now. We're going to go through this now. Yeah, let's take a look at these comments. I've run out of slides. Oh, okay. I we mean, can. Do you, let's talk to people. Let's talk to people. <laughs> oh my gosh, Wendy's out of slides. How can this be? Like, wait, <laughs> I can go make more. Uh, all right, let's take a look at some comments. Okay. Kay Villegas says, hi guys, you guys are great. I've been listening to you for a while and love how knowledgeable and honest you are. Thank yeah, you. yeah. We're not mm -hmm. going to. <laughs> we we're, we're not in the business of lying in order to get sales by any stretch of the imagination. Straightforward. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be very to straightforward. Yes, because people well, lie well, no. and numbers don't. All right. And she also says, um, so grateful to have you share information about the DFW area specifically. Well, thank you. And you're welcome. Well, are you looking into DFW? Area? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is our playground. Yeah. Like we've been here. Well, I've been here since. I don't know, 30, oh gosh, it's too many years for me to count. 
but we've been married for 31 years and we've lived here the whole time. Yeah. I can do that math. <laughs> All right, Chris Pure. Let's see, where did he go? I just lost him. There it is. Okay, so this is what Chris Pure ans um, asks. Where is it falling? Oh, I see no change. So I already kind of have uh, showed that. Like if you look, um, do an MLS search or have your realtor do it and enter the field for percentage of price change. And that's where you'll really see it. And some cities, it'll just be like the entire line is just these down arrows. Mm -hmm. You know, I've looked at it and been like, oh my goodness. Um, and then if you see it and it's pre-owned, so you know you're not running into, you know, new construction mm -hmm. shenanigans, um, then it's even more compelling. Like you can look at this and it's just like, wow. You look know, at areas um, where they have lots of homes for sale. Yes. High, yes. Am, high inventory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've spoken to a few sellers that we've said, well, honestly, well, this really isn't the best time to sell. And I realize that means we're not going to get yeah. a commission, but in all honesty, it's really not. Your area is saturated right now. Um, so that would be an answer to your question, Chris. Little Elm over there has a lot. Yeah. And then on out east has a lot too. Mm -hmm. And we know Rockwall for sure. Yeah. Actually, yeah. down south, mm -hmm. Midlothian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question here. Let's see here now. Are there any centrally located areas with highly rated schools that may have competitive, competitive pricing? Centrally hmm. located makes it a little harder because my first thought is like Rockwall, <laughs> you know, but that's not particularly that's not centrally, centrally located. located. Um, but it's definitely got competitive pricing going on there. Um, yeah. So, so you know, uh, Allen, Plano, those areas, they're very competitive, um, very much where you're going to have a hard time getting an offer accepted. Let me mm -hmm. put it that way. Um, so competitive pricing wise, you get a lot of competitive pricing in your less desirable schools or where there's new construction. Okay. So that's a hard one. There's been more pre-owned coming up in the Plano area mm -hmm, maybe, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So really your highly, the neighborhoods. your highest rated schools, when I think centrally located, you know, <clears throat> maybe I think about areas like South Lake Capel, um, mm. Allen, right. These areas kind of come to mind and those now I will say in South Lake, we negotiated some, fabulous deals this winter. We mm -hmm. really had a ball in South Lake. Um, and that's somewhat centrally located. It's mm -hmm. near the airport. So I guess it depends on like what you mean. And also depends on your price range, right? Because South Lake, you know, you're talking we're more like, you know, yeah. yeah. And the ones we were negotiating were in the million price range. Um, so that's kind of an example of a centrally located one, but it's, but it is on the high side um, of, of the price, which by the way, if you're looking for those highly rated schools, I did do an entire video, actually several on mm -hmm. your best rated schools. Um, and I think I may have done one on your best rated schools in your most affordable school districts. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but Rockwell definitely comes to mind and fate. Again, those aren't particularly centrally located. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, I don't understand this. My question. zip code. I don't quite understand. So that question. What it looks like. Tell me some more. Tell me more <laughs> what you mean by this. Like, what do you want to know about um, 75287? Seven, Meanwhile, Dale's going see. to look it up. Um, okay. And then we have greetings from SFO greetings and hello and welcome from to San home Francisco. in Dallas, from San Francisco and excellent, wow. very insightful comment here. Price Fake drop. Yes, <laughs> that is exactly right. Fake drop. Okay. So back to real mm -hmm. quick by mm -hmm. Jugwabi and five, seven, five, two, seven, five, two, eight, seven mm -hmm. in March. Well, in February, median sales prices were four forty three, four hundred forty three thousand. And the end of March, they were at they went up all the way up to five hundred seventy seven thousand. Wow! So the that's pretty a good area. increase. That's a hundred yeah. and hundred and fourteen. Mm -hmm. Wait, hundred and thirty four thousand dollar increase. So you're talking about a hot area there. Yeah. Um, where's it? What about average sales price? Seven. What's going on there? Uh, Instead of medium average. average. You just go over right there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Same thing. Average Not went quite as from much. Yeah. 507 to 635. Yeah. So still that one, that's a hot yeah. zip code. All right. Let's see here now. H H Design says, I think the biggest issue is inflation is still going up and layoffs will continue as well. Um Possibly. Has been an interesting week, isn't it? With the inflation markers still going up, and then you saw interest rates go up. Um, and I think really interest rates are going to be a wild card when you, you know, like this year we saw February be a little stronger than usual. Well, rates were lower. Yeah. 
You know, so Dallas mm -hmm. is very rate sensitive. And now that we're going up again, I know we've had some frustrated buyers this week that are like, oh, great. Rates went up again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I know. Uh, so so we've definitely had um, had some frustration there. It'll be interesting to see if those rates are going to come back down. Right. Because everybody was like in December, euphoric, like, woohoo, the rates are going to come down in March. Definitely didn't happen. Um, and now here we have, you know, interest rates going back up again. Uh, let's see here now. Let's show this comment. Ronald says, could you please show market changes in Kaufman County? Kaufman County. All right. Well, the master here has uh, Netris Trends pulled up on his laptop and he his your wish is his command. So he's looking that up right now. Well, so let's see. He wants to know market changes. So how are we doing? So, Kaufman County? Well, and it went up in December. 353 to 374, but it came way down in January and back just like what we see in most places mm -hmm. where it went back up in February and now so we're in the 350,000 range coming as of the end of March coming down. So we'll see if it's going back up in April or not. So yeah, and I so think you know I will be right back. Yeah, Kaufman County is really a good place if you're in a more affordable price range. It's like it's like it's not really where you want to go if you have like a seven eight hundred thousand dollar home, right? Because you want to kind of stay um, in the back. You want who was that anyway? I don't know. Somebody came in our house just now. We have no idea. We know. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so market changes in Kaufman County. Um, it hasn't been huge changes. You know, went up a little bit in December, dropped back down in January. So it's pretty much par for what you would expect. But a lot of affordable yeah. options, a lot of affordable options pretty, there. Um, overall, I mean, over the last mm -hmm. year, it's been pretty steady. And yeah, until the jump in December and, and drop in January. Yeah. But so. Yeah. Um, let's see here now. How far back can you go? Average, yeah. How far back can you go on your market analysis? Pretty much like as far back. I mean, we're talking 2000. Yeah, that's about. Of course, MLS it wouldn't be shows, remotely accurate. Yeah, MLS shows data back to about 2000. It's actually really fun. And I know this is off topic, but if you ever just want to have a good time, look at all the houses in the 2008s, all the old listings. It's hilarious what they were selling for, but they were all foreclosures. And so like you look at these pictures and they're just these disgusting houses and you're like, <laughs> it's actually really kind of fun. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I know I'm a real estate nerd, but I've spent a, a good Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like at these old, yeah. I mean, they'll have like these, you know, some of them like will have these big holes in the floor, holes in the roof. Some of them will say like, you know, enter at your own risk. <laughs> that was foreclosure heyday. So that was actually a lot of fun. So yeah. in answer to your question, but the farther back you go, the less accurate it's going to yeah. be. Typically we look at about 90 days depending if there was major changes in those months. Mm -hmm. Sometimes though, this of recent, I have been looking at last year just because prices were up last year, this time of the year. So yeah. Yeah. In some places. Yeah. I mean, we have like this set of ideal criteria, right. Of what we want um, in order to make it comparable. And then sometimes you have to like, stretch your criteria. Yeah. And, and we always tell our buyers, you know, um, we have this ideal set of what we're, what's going to bring us the most accurate analysis. And anytime we have to deviate from that, a little less accurate, a little mm -hmm. less accurate. Um, so let's see here now. Oso says tricky sign now, not good. Tricky sign. Tell me more. What do you mean by that? How does it look? Tricky How sign far now, back not do you good. go? Yeah. Um, first time here. Well, welcome. Welcome to the channel, Home in Dallas. Um, let's see here now. What are some good DFW cities if you don't care about school district? That is an Empty excellent question. Empty nesters and last home. Yes. Okay. So are you looking for land or are you looking yeah. for? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could get excited about that because like. then you can negotiate really good deals. <laughs> um, but but really, what do you? What are your criteria? Tell me, what are your criteria for a good DFW yeah. city? Um, if you don't think like, if you're like, yeah, if you don't care about schools. Okay. So if you're like, well, low crime, right. Safe, maybe community mm -hmm. involvement, um, cities like Midlothian. Come Midlo right. Yeah. Midlothian. Midlothian. Marthachi. Yes. Yes. On the South side. Um, um Midlothian, so, especially if you buy on that North side, you've got these beautiful, 
um, hills, rolling hills, and these huge towering trees. That's the north side of Midlothian. Very nice. Uh, your median sales price is not super high there. So it's not the place that, you know, you want to mm -hmm. buy like a million dollar home, right? Um, I think median sales price somewhere around 500,000, yeah. right? So that, you know, um, really neat area though. Strong community feel, right? Um, low crime mm -hmm. rate. So that one comes to mind for sure. Maybe um, looking out in the Argyle North Lake area. Yes, yes, yeah. Especially like in North Lake, if you North like of Fort Worth. Especially if you like like a community um, feel like Pecan Square, yeah. you know, or Harvest. Harvest. They have the coolest uh, community involvement. I, I love I love Harvest. It's really cool. Um, Has a lot to offer there. Maybe. Then I guess the East would be the other areas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, let's see, Ronald, could you please comment on the market changes in Kaufman County? Yeah, we just did that. We right. talked about yeah. that one. Okay. Did we miss it? Um, mm -hmm. I think he's just kind of asking the same okay. question. Okay. Um, I love watching different markets around the country. It is quite a mixed trail. Yes, it really is. It mm -hmm. really is. Um, I love watching around this the within, country, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, and I just love watching just within right, Dallas. Right know? now, it's us in Florida is competing, Texas and Florida. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you this, the, the stereotype that, you know, everybody's leaving California for Texas. That's not what we see. We see people see all, all over. over. We see yeah. people all over the world, Hong Kong, um, England, I don't know, Zimbabwe. I mean, we've just seen them everywhere, you know, so we haven't seen a consistent and pattern of just multiple, one state. Multiple different states. Yes. Yes. Multiple different states. Um, so definitely love that as well. Okay. Let's see here now. When my husband and I are ready to start searching for our new home again, uh, are we able to get in contact with you? Yes. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. Uh, on our description page, you will find description of every video. And also on our homepage, you'll find our Let's Find Home questionnaire. Um, and that is definitely our go-to. Um, the process we follow is I'm harder to reach over the phone because I really like to have like a face-to-face and I like to have all your information in front of me. And so typically, like if I can get somebody to put in a let's find home questionnaire and I'm like, oh, man, I can even start a search mm -hmm. and be like real educated by the time I have my first call with them. Um, and so that's our preferred way is that let's find home questionnaire. Um, then we have Google Meet. We talk about everything that you're looking for and, you know, give you some more direction. And we kind of go from there. Um, another thing we've been doing a lot of is we have, you know, we first we have a Google Meet to get acquainted. Second one is. We talk about representation. We talk about how that we want to answer all your questions about any changes that are coming in mid-July. Um, so in that second meeting, we're going to actually like look at the settlement and show you, okay, this is how it's going to change. This is what it's like now. This is what how it's going to change to make sure you can feel really good about going into that. Um, anyway, so that is how to get in con that's contact how with us. Let's yes. find home questionnaire for the win. Uh, let's see. Any new construction opportunities below seven hundred thousand in Collin County? Collin County. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It just depends on are you wanting within a healthy median sales price? Because you know, if you can you can buy in Princeton all day long, you know, five six hundred thousand, but that's maybe not the best time, best place to put that. Okay, so if your median sales price in an area is three fifty, which is kind of be what you're going to have like in Princeton. Um, you, you, you don't want to be, but I'm going to assume maybe you're talking about like Salina um, and Prosper, Frisco. Um, and the answer would be in Salina. You can. And we have buyers under contract, you know, below 700. And of course, that's kind of like, I don't know what your criteria are, right? Like what size house you're looking for. Yeah, because it, um, it's going to vary by, yeah, size and because mm -hmm. um, Alan actually has a few. There's Anna out mm -hmm. east of east, north and east of. Yeah, uh, not the Allen. best of schools in Anna. Yeah. We don't see really great school readings there. Neat place to live, but not the greatest um, school readings. Um, Salina, a lot in Salina. You can get them in Salina. Mm -hmm. Farmersville yeah. out east of. Mm -hmm. And again, Farmersville not Rockwell. having the best of school yeah. readings. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, you've got. There is some in Frisco, smaller. Yeah. And, and Collin County in general has your strongest, that county is your strongest for schools in the entire DFW area. You have the most concentrated, highly rated schools in Collin County. Um, however, that doesn't mean all the schools are rated well and they're okay. not. Okay. So, so you just, you do want to be aware of that. 
um, that that you've got a good cluster, good concentration of highly rated ones, but they don't. They Here's where you want to go. You want to go to Levon. There is. Levon doesn't have great school ratings. A hundred. <laughs> So he's right. Levon has a lot of new construction. Oh, if you don't care about school ratings, oh, okay. You know, um, Levon, Princeton, um, lower median sales prices, right? Um, Royce City. Um, though, well, that's not um, McKinney's County, not but, bad. Now, mm -hmm. McKinney is not their ISD is not rated up there, but they do have some good schools and McKinney is nice. Some, yeah. Like it's like overall product. their so ratings to, are not great. You just have to look at where yeah. that area you're going to. Yeah. So you won't get great school district in McKinney, but you can get some good isolated yeah. ones. And McKinney's nice. It's very popular. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa. Shoot, even Salina has like Dear Horton Homes in, you know, under 500,000 if you want a yeah. Dear Horton home, you know. Um, so, so again, it, it just depends. It depends what, you know, what your criteria are. Wiley has it's good school. Yeah, yes. Wiley has, <coughs> excuse me, Wiley has outstanding schools. I mean, if Wiley had better highway access, man, that would explode. Yeah. I yeah. mean, because their schools are better than Prosper ISD, you know. Everybody wants Prosper school districts, but they don't realize Wiley ISD are better. They're higher ratings, but they have the issue with Wiley is you have this main road that leads into town and it's not all that attractive and it's stop, go, stop, go. And you got a lot of grandfathered in mm -hmm. things. So you might be driving by and you see like a mobile home, you know, or whatever. And you sort of think like, oh, this must not be a really nice area, you know, as you're driving in, but it's got excellent schools and a lot of nice That's choices. Nice, yeah. Nice neighborhoods too. Uh, let's see here now. Yeah. Ah, a reminder. Hence, hence, while I will remain, remain renting. renting. Yeah. A, a mixed bag there because I'm definitely not one to say, um, you know, it's always a good time to buy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not in that camp at all, but I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because you get a lot of equity when you yeah. buy right. Um, yeah. Man, we bought some real dumps back in 2008 and they've really gone up in value. Yeah, You know, so we have some great rentals with great equity. Um, so so I think there's a balanced response there. Um, sometimes it is definitely better to rent, but I also in general see a lot of benefits mm -hmm. to owning a home as well. Um, just depends on the situation. You wanna be smart about it. And so for you, it might be that you're just like, this is not yeah. the time. Um, Keep saving. Yes. Thank you for your answer. You are welcome. Um, let's see here now. I am looking to relocate closer to the Willow Park. I've been looking at Springtown and Paradise. All right. The master is going to look that up for us and see info on that. I'm going to move on to the next question while he does that, and then we'll come back to it. Spring. All right. Cave Legas, is there any advantage to being able to move any time? No hurry, no lease, etc. Are there any affordable opportunities to buy land in areas with good school districts? Well, I, I can tell you right now, you're my favorite type of buyer. Um, and and I know they think I'm crazy because I will tell them if you have the choice, wait. <laughs> you know, um, uh, November, December, January, outstanding opportunities, outstanding opportunities. Um, and it's a heyday for us because we can negotiate. <laughs> we, um, we we did get one in uh, in South Lake where the appraised value, okay, was one hundred and five thousand higher than what they actually our buyer actually bought it for. Okay, so they went in the door with an appraised value one hundred five thousand. Okay, equity of one hundred five thousand. So that is like how powerful you can negotiate. So I would say, if your calendar's open, think about it in October, November, December, January. Okay. Um, because that's when True. you're going to get your best deals. All right. Well, let's go back to the. All right. So uh, let's see here now. Um, Susan was saying, I'm looking to relocate close to the Willow Park. I've been looking, looking at Springtown, Springtown and, and Paradise. Paradise. Oh, okay. So well, there is quite a bit. There's, well, this, this Willow Park in Springtown, there's. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. Anywhere from, <clears throat> depending on size you're looking at, up to. Around 2,000 square and less uh, in the mid 300s. Mm -hmm. um, and then just looking at it, it see. looks like it's a let's fairly see. affordable area, is what I'm seeing. You know, so, yeah. so um, if, if you're going to, you know, like I always like to say um, it, it that you the, want to have nicer homes near, near if you. If you're in the mid right? 2,000 square foot, you're in the, looks like, 
to lower to upper fives. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to tell my buyers, if you can buy in a neighborhood where there's nicer homes, do it. OK, um, yeah. I just finished a video on DR Horton today where I was talking about how DR Horton has some neighborhoods where they're all DR Horton, just nothing but DR Horton, just you know, um, and then there are other DR Horton neighborhoods that are mixed in with like Highland Homes and Perry Homes and Coventry. So if you can, if you're going to go DR Horton, buy in a neighborhood where there's all these nicer builders nearby. Um, so that's that was what um, that I don't know where'd I get off on that one. I don't know, but I do feel very strongly about that. <laughs> um, in answer to your question, yes, absolutely. Wait till the fall. Okay, um, what are the prospects of parks at Wilson? In Salina, any scope for home price negotiation in that community? The master has done a lot here in parks at Wilson Creek. We have shown a lot there, um, and and definitely how is the how are the negotiations? Is now is that the one that has like the cell tower? Is that parks no, at Wilson no, Creek? No, okay. That's the okay. Nice. <clears throat> parks at Wilson Creek is a nicer. They're yeah, they're actually still early on in building there. Uh, they're just some of the builders are probably fin finishing up a phase one. But they're getting, yeah, it's a nice, mm -hmm. it's a nice number. What, yeah. uh, what were they looking um, for? Any scope the for home price negotiation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, especially as they continue to build and you and you find some and you can move in sooner and find some inventory homes, they will definitely negotiate. Mm -hmm. So still kind so, of. But new. I, um, I didn't, yeah, we've been negotiating with some of them, mm -hmm. but um, depends on, also depends on the builder too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Chris Pure, are people from other states still moving to Texas like during the pandemic? Absolutely, they yes. are. Um, a lot. If we didn't have migration, this market would tank, okay? <laughs> like it is not self-sustaining for how much new construction there is, okay? There is not um, enough existing population to support what we're seeing. And so we're still seeing a lot of businesses come in. Um, like say, for example, if suddenly... Texas decided to amp up all their business regulations or add on taxes or something to where companies didn't want to relocate anymore. You would see like some big changes in the market because we require the migration to match the prices. So we have these vying forces. If migration slows down, if companies stop coming, we're going to see prices drop. But what we're seeing is they're, they're, they're kind of level. And so we're seeing like prices go up in some places and drop in the others, depending on how much inventory they have, how much demand they have. How good their schools are. How good their schools are has a lot to do with it. And you'll hear me mm -hmm. a lot talk about schools. Um, and just because that's where we see the price, the prices go. That's where the demand is. That's where the yeah. demand is. That's where the prices go up. That being said, that it's really about good prices and good access because a place like Wiley has outstanding schools and you just don't see as much demand mm -hmm. because it doesn't have as good access. So. Yep. All right. Um, and M says, what's wrong with Princeton? Nothing's wrong with Princeton. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said, um, it has a lower median sales price. So it's an outstanding place Earth, to get yeah. a, an affordable home. Again, if you can buy, let's just say your price range is 800,000. Well, the median sales price of Princeton is going to be under 400,000. So do you want to be the nicest home? Yeah. Because the nicer your home, the less liquid it is, the longer it's going to take to sell, Right. So you want to be the smaller home surrounded by the gorgeous, you know, huge mansion type homes. OK, uh, going back to my previous example, if you're going to buy a D.R. Horton home, buy it in Pecan Square, where you can be near Highland Homes and Coventry. Um, David Weekly is there. Not as good of a builder, but, but still you've got some high end builders. So nothing wrong with Princeton at all. It's just a more affordable place. And and they actually have decently rated schools. Yeah. Right. So it's a good solution if, you know, you're in a lower price range, but you want a good school. They're decently rated schools as well. So nothing wrong with Princeton. It's more about your price point. When mm -hmm. I get, when we get our million dollar buyers, um, it's always amazing to them how we can kind of whittle down the areas that are best for in terms of buying like comparable homes. Because like I can find you a million dollar home anywhere in the Metroplex, right? But does that necessarily mean um, like from an investment standpoint that you want to be there? Right. Instead, go for the, the higher median sales price. Right. So my million dollar buyers, we're going to talk about places like Lucas, Parker, you know, South Lake. Um, and so it's really nothing wrong with Princeton at all. This is more about price point. And I hope that makes sense. I'm not trying to say don't buy in Princeton. I'm just saying that when you can, when possible, try to go for a higher median sales price. Try to be on the lower end. Five hundred thousand dollar home. 
buy in an area with a median sales price in the 600s, you know, or higher if you can. It makes you have to work a little harder. It makes us have to look a little harder, but that's fine because it's a better investment. Yeah, they um, have, let's see, right now, Princeton, they have Lenar out there, uh, Pace Setter, uh, LGI, Starlight Homes. That's, um, that's, I can't remember the other builder. The, mm -hmm. Starlight. The builder mm -hmm. That's owned by a Trophy, uh, KBDR Horton. Uh, so and you yeah, can, you can see by Syntax, these, yeah, you can Syntax see by these. Is, is pulty. Um, cool thing you're going to find with all of these builders. These are builders. the builders that target first time home Baser. buyers. Yeah. And these are the builders they're going to have for Ashen commitments. Woods. Ashen Woods is one who owns um, Starlight. That's oh, right. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you heard me, yeah. but, but what I was saying is these, these home, these affordable homes, they kind of target the first time home buyer. They're more likely to have a forward commitment. Mm -hmm. Right. right? Right. So, and I don't know if you've watched my videos on this, but a forward commitment is when they can go in and give you a 4% interest rate without doing a 2-1 buy down. It's just straight up 4% and they can pay your closing costs. That's a forward commitment. It's my absolute favorite interest rate incentive. And and all of the builders Dale was just reading, um, Centex, DR Horton, they're all known for that. So so Princeton, great place for first time home buyer, right? Um, affordable home. Affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can get some good deals there. Okay. Nothing wrong with Princeton. Do you have any experience with all-in-one loans? Okay, you'll have to give me a little more detail there on what you mean by that. Are you talking about like a construction loan? Um, give me a little bit more, more info on what you mean by all-in-one loan. All right, subscribed. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> Let's see. Um, first time home buyer who wants to keep my monthly payment, minimum monthly payment and which would build equity faster plus or minus 2200 square foot what are some good areas around north dallas that you would suggest okay so i see your first time home buyer but you didn't tell me your price range so um i'm gonna assume maybe that it's lower right so what i would do is get into the nicest school district you can okay um and you may not be able to get the best school district right because being on a lower price range um even Salina, like in their Sutton Fields, you can get a somewhat affordable home there. So I guess really I could answer this better if I knew what your price range was. So let me see if you're still on. No, I don't see um, that you're still on because that would be helpful if I knew uh, your minimum monthly payment, what you wanted it to be. Um, because I always kind of like to go by median sales price and school range, right? So um, so what I would want to see there is like, what's what's your price range? What's the Where can we find that in the highest median sales price in the best schools? That would be my goal. And of course, there's a lot of variables there. Do you have to commute, right? Do you have a commute that you're looking at? Or are you purely a remote worker? Um, so yeah, I had to need a little more information before I could really give you a good answer on that. Um, off the top of your head, which home improvements are, in your opinion, easier to get your money back for in selling price? We live in Allen and are thinking of selling. All right, this is a good one. Okay, flooring, walls, bathroom, kitchen, okay? Don't add insulation to your attic, okay? <laughs> That's not going to do anything for you. Um, don't add a water purifier, okay? That's not going to do it for you. Gosh, there's so many people we talk to that they've just done all the wrong upgrades and we just like. <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely ones that you're going to get your money back off. Also landscaping, okay? If you yeah. can give somebody something other than a bare wooden fence to look at, okay? And you can get some pretty cheap, you know, uh, landscaping yeah. and just let it. If you're not sure if you're moving it, just get it in there and let it Curve grow. Curb appeal is huge. Carbon yeah. peel is huge for sure. Um, so I would say those four things, definitely flooring, okay, paint, kitchen, bathrooms. Those are going to make your biggest difference, all right? Um, and then landscaping. That would definitely be what I would say. Um, what do you think about Sutton Fields and the Builder First Texas Home? Let's just have a conversation First. about First Texas Home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the inspection restrictions they're putting out, okay? Um, so they, what they've said is they put out a, a thing saying they don't allow your first two inspections with new builds. So you can't do, what do they call the pre-pour and the pre-drywall. They won't allow those inspections anymore. So I don't really appreciate that. I don't like in, inspection restrictions. Um, in Sutton Fields, okay, this is an example where you've got D.R. Horton, you've got some lesser expensive builders and you've got some more expensive builders. So if I know I'm just thinking about First Texas, right, I would rather find First Texas surrounded by more expensive homes yeah, um, versus are, First Texas nestled in with D.R. Horton, which is a lesser expensive home. 
First Texas is a mid-level builder. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have some nice homes. They do mm -hmm. lend towards the smaller size, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So so I guess that would be my thought is like, if I'm going to buy in Sutton Fields, I'd want to go with one of the lower end builders and let First Texas be my higher end builder, right? If I was going to be purely strategic about this. Whole thing about Sutton Fields is, is, is one of your more affordable new construction uh, mm -hmm. communities within Prosper ISD. So right now what they have showing, First Texas is in the, anywhere from upper sixes into the mid 800s looks like yeah in Sutton Fields. so that would just be my thought on the on the first texas Different if, sizes. if it's the builder that you like you know they've got other ones right in there like edgewood creek isn't that also first texas i think yeah. um all right next question Five hundred thousand. ah yes he was saying he was a first time home buyer um let me see what was your let me see here now first time home buyer who wants to keep minimum monthly payment um build equity faster so 500,000, let's see, what area did you say you were looking at? This was your original post. Um, what are some good areas around North Dallas which would build equity faster um, in that $500,000 range? So Sutton Fields would do it, okay? And, and, and here's, here my, here's my thought on DR Horton. And I just finished a video on it today. Um, it's a home that I would buy as a first time home buyer, but not as an empty nester, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because what I see are systems that are not, top of the line, but am I okay living there for five years? If that's my only way to get my foot in the door into home ownership, okay, maybe so. And I, especially if like you're in the 300,000 range, right? But I wouldn't buy a DR Horton and plan to live there for 25 years, right? Because you know, you're got not top of the line mm -hmm. systems. Um, so in, you know, you could buy in Prosper ISD, you know, uh, Sutton, DR Horton and get, get that for less than 500,000. Um, but I would say, again, you want to focus on um, trying to buy in your hiding, higher median sales price and in the best schools that you can possibly get into. Um, that would be my thought. And what's your view on First Texas Homes? <laughs> I think I just answered that. I don't appreciate their new inspe their inspection restrictions. That's my main gripe with, with First Texas. I think that we should be able First to pull Texas in. First Texas in uh, Kaufman County. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking to get a new construction with them in Kaufman County and an all-in-one loan in First Lean Helox. Okay. I was looking to use one to buy. Um, so I guess it just depends on the price point. When I think of First Texas, I tend to think they're going to be a little bit higher end than what you would typically buy in Kaufman County, right? Because if Kaufman County as a whole, median sales price 350 probably going to see like a lot of lower end builders and First Texas is a little bit higher. That's not like your highest, highest, but it is a little bit higher than like Lennar, DR Horton and so on. So, um, you know, ideal scenario, if I'm going to do first Texas, I want to be surrounded by more expensive builders. It's middle of the range. Um, it's in the Forney area and stuff. It's mm -hmm. So you're looking at Forney? Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. In um, Kaufman County there. Uh, Forney is an area that has so much new construction and so much in the lower price range new construction. I'm not looking fate or, yeah. I don't know, yeah. up there. Yeah, but fate's not in Kaufman County, right? Yeah. Oh, is it? Well, okay. I I okay. It no, it's County. not. It's in Rockwell County. I'm sorry. It's All north. right. Any you're insight right. on Aubrey? You know what? If you're going to buy an Aubrey, try to get within the good schools because Aubrey's kind of divided that way. You've mm -hmm. got some in Denton ISD. You've got you can you can you can in a few selected areas. I think you can score like Prosper or Salina ISD. You're going to be higher than Aubrey. Um, Aubrey's going fast. Closer to 180. Yeah, closer I to mean, 180. 380. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Closer yeah. to yeah. Highway yeah. 380. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Aubrey's growing fast. It's a little bit putting a lot of new construction in there with not a whole lot to sustain it. Right. Where are my grocery stores? Where's my Home Depot? Where's my Kohl's? Yeah. Right. Where are my restaurants? It's getting there. But... So definitely bedroom community. Are you OK driving? You know, having to drive out of Aubrey. Now, those are my thoughts on Aubrey, I guess. It's, it is affordable. you got some good new construction opportunities. Lower median sales price again. So it's not the place that, you know, ideally and again, you can buy where you want to buy. It's just that if you can be, you know, the smaller house in the nice neighborhood, if possible, as long as it's possible, it's ultimately up to you. All right, let's see. Um, commute to Frisco. Ah, Michelle was saying commute to Frisco. So yeah, so Salina comes to mind at that Sutton Fields. You're in that five hundred thousand dollar price range. Oh. Um, same same advice is and 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 what we would do is if you came to us is we would do set up a search with that in mind mm -hmm. figure out where are our communities and then we would focus we'll in on the those, communities those yeah sales people in those communities right yeah. right we do we have um 
We have a buyer under contract right now in Salina in Liliana, a little bit above 500, I think mm -hmm. 550. Um, so it's very doable. So, okay. Now let's see her now. Aubrey. Okay. Got you on there. Uh, let's see. How about Cambridge Crossing? Ah, Cambridge Crossing is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Cambridge Probably Crossing has such expensive. an elegant entry. Now, Cambridge Crossing, isn't it in Salina ISD? Yeah. So that's my only yes. thing is like, you'll see, you'll see this great divide in Salina where people are like, uh, we get a lot of buyers who are like, I want, um, I'm okay with Salina, but I want Prosper ISD. So Cambridge Crossing is very elegant, um, has a very stately entrance, but it is within Salina ISD. So you have to realize that some people won't even consider it. Um, they've got some nice homes there. They've got some 40 foot lot lines, I think. I think we looked at those there. Well, they, um, yeah, they have mm -hmm. different. So if you're, it depends on your price range, but if you can score within Prosper ISD, you're going to ultimately have a more I, desirable um I know we talked to Perry and Highland there recently. Uh, they are um, finishing up a current phase and it'll be, but they were looking at 2025, I think, before the next phase. So I'd have to go back and talk to some of the other, like Union, Maine, and Coventry's out there as, as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Ah. He was saying, and the neighborhood is Polo Ridge. So I believe, let me see here now. He was asking first take on First Texas Homes, looking for in Kaufman County. So what builders are Polo in, Ridge. yeah, what builders are there in Polo Ridge? That would be a question I would ask. So he is looking at up. Um, let's see what Katie's comment is. Hello, I recently visited Kesmar. Is it pronounced Chesmar or Kesmar? I think it's Kesmar. I've always called it Kesmar. The Las Lomas Forney home that was once listed for three eighty nine is now for four eighty nine. What the heck? <laughs> How long ago was that? Do you think this is a wise purchase? I would want to look at the comps on that one. Are they, you know, are they going to lower it to three eighty nine tomorrow um, and say, look at this big sale that we're having? So I would say for sure, I would want to look at the comps and look at the history, look at what is selling in that neighborhood, look at what prices Kesmar has been um, accepting. So I would for sure just want to look into it more. Not a bad price point for Forney. Okay. Wouldn't buy a million dollar house there necessarily again because of the median sales price. Um, but um, but yeah, Forney is about in the three fifty dollars to $400,000 price range, uh, median sales price. Well, there are some, First Texas has some some higher price. Well, they're bigger homes too. These were talking over 3,000, some over 4,000 square foot. And so we're talking in the 800s and 900s out mm -hmm. in Kaufman County mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. in Polo Ridge. Yeah. And is that Mesquite? Mostly, like yeah. My one thought as Mesquite is close, just, it's Mesquite close to Forney. Yeah, my yeah, one thought of Mesquite is just kind of older Forney. retail. That would be my only thought but of that. This is going to be further, further south, southeast yeah. part of Mesquite. All right, let's see here now. Does Wiley have any plans to build out highway access? I actually researched this once because if they did, that'd be a great place to invest. Man, they, you know, because they've just got yeah. that ugly main road and it's stop go. If they could just do something with that road. There's plans, but it, I think it's out there. There's not, I haven't seen any. Well, I haven't, it's been a little while since I looked, but it's, um, I don't think it's, they have, if you look on their website and you can see there's some, some drawings and stuff that they're looking at doing, but it's not. Yeah. It's going to take them a little while. Yeah. 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 I, if they could do that, boy, whew, if they could improve the curb appeal and the accessibility. Um, of that main road, I, I think that their values would go up so much. And they, and they have a lovely community with inspiration, um, you know, Wiley, St. Paul. So they've got some really lovely, very elegant, I think, new construction communities yeah. there. It's just that one road is so ugly. I guess the other area, though, if you're coming in from Saxe, it's, it's a little bit different coming up 78 or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, can you give me your thoughts on Cambridge Crossing? I think we already answered that one. Ah. What about Little Elm? Okay, well, Dale mentioned this earlier. Little Elm's got a lot of opportunity right now. Mm -hmm. um, the thing to be aware of with Little Elm is there were only three cities in all of DFW that scored a C with the Texas <laughs> Education Agency, and Little Elm was one of them. Um, you had one in Little Elm and two in Cedar Hill. The, the um, other thing about out there in Little Elm, so not all of it is incorporated, as in mean meaning that not all of it is city limits. And it's Little Elm, if you look, if you like went to... Google Maps and you search Little Elm, you'd see a, a really weird draw, you know, it's all over the place, you know, their, their city limits. And so those parts that are not in the 
incorporated or in what they call freshwater districts or like muds. You're not paying city taxes, but you're paying fairly high mud taxes. Mm -hmm. so. This is what I want to know. Does that, and I, and I think I know the answer to this, but you tell me, being in a mud, does that count against your DTI with getting a loan? Is that considered part of your mortgage, like a tax? It's um, probably your, part of your property taxes. So, so think about that, how that affects buying power because the mud, you know, right, it's going to be providing your utilities, mm -hmm. right? Well, normally you're not going to have utilities really count necessarily against you with your DTI, right? right? But then with a the mud, you are. So yeah. that's going to affect your buying power. Um, and, um, and Little Elm, no, we have a buyer a looking. Point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going it's to affect your buying power. Um, Little Elm within Denton ISD might consider that. You've got some good opportunities there. Yeah. One of the, like a pretty nice neighborhood, Paloma Creek out there, uh, has quite a few uh, sales. Uh, I know just in the Paloma Creek South area, there's about 50 listings right now. So 50 listings in one community opportunity knocking right there. And wow, that is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I think so. Maybe a little bit of a potentially a, some people won't consider it because they think Little Elm ISD has a C rating. Mm -hmm. But I know that I think within Little Elm, I think there are some areas. Can you get Frisco ISD? I know you can get Denton ISD. Yeah, it's a really weird. It's it's just got weird setup. school districts. So if you yeah. were like all about price and you wanted that Frisco ISD and you can't afford it anywhere else, right? If you could get it in Little Elm, that'd be fantastic. And I could be wrong on that, but I do just remember thinking that it had just a few pockets of really good school districts. Um, so that's a way if you're in a lower price point, because at Little Elm, is it's very pretty. It's just I don't know what happened with their schools that they ended up, you know, getting that C they rating. Do have, they do have Frisco, Denton, mm -hmm. and Little Elm. Right. So if you were considering Little Elm, try to get it within Frisco ISD. Actually, yeah. Yeah, that would be really good. Frisco ISD out there has the most schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Devonshire Forney. Okay. A um, lot going on there in, in, in Forney. There's a lot there to offer at Devonshire. Again, just um, probably more of like an affordable entry level, but not necessarily one where you want to buy a million dollar home. Um, just from that median sales price idea, right? So liquidity. Um, imagine if you were looking at a house that was surrounded by million dollar homes and it was only for 500,000. You're going to snatch that up because it's, so it's going to be more liquid. And so the opposite is true. Um, Forney is, is also, Forney, in my mind, like I think, I tend to think of like Forney and Princeton. I tend to kind of think of them similarly because there's a lot of that, lots and lots and lots of new construction. Um, wow. I think Princeton has some issues with traffic so, because anytime you see like the city is very friendly towards a lot of dense housing units, you're going to say, you have to ask yourself, is the infrastructure going to support this? Devonshire has over 130. Uh, wow. These are mostly new construction listings right now. How much was that? 130. 130. William Ryan, wow. Trophy, Chaddock. Um, Bloomfield, Highland Homes, History Maker, Perry Homes. Perry Homes, okay. Um, some custom ones too. I'm seeing some, some, some serious pre, negotiating going some on there. Some out there too. I think you could really, that's a lot of exposure for those builders and that's a lot of those builders competing against each other. So that would be like a negotiating playground. Okay, that's what I'm, th that's what I'm thinking. All right. Do you think a DR Horton new build in Richland Hills is a good move for a first time home buyer? Depends on your Maybe. price point. If you're saying around 320, I think sometimes when you're trying to get your foot in the door with home ownership, DR Horton is an affordable product, right? Um, and when you're just talking about, you know, like I do think home ownership is worth it. And again, a DR Horton home is something I would buy as a first time home buyer, but it's not necessarily a home that I would plan on spending 20 years in, right? If that makes sense. So, you know, you buy it and you're like, hey, this is a step up. I'm going to negotiate the best possible deal I can um, and then plan to live there, but not plan to live there forever. Because in my mind, I know the stuff that's inside those walls is not going to be the best quality and it's not going to last forever. Right. So you're going to be talking about like, you know, hey, this HVAC is not going to be as nice as the one that I can get, you know, with Perry Homes or Brand Homes or whatever. Um, Looks like a um, low 300s for 1500 square foot home. Mm hmm. So, so it's a good, pretty good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Again, um, yeah, if you're if you're looking again to get your foot in the door, it's like a good, it's a decent option. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let's see here now. Cambridge Crossing has extension close to DNT. That is true. 
Uh, Colin Outer yeah. Loop Road Till Farmerville. Do you think it's a good choice thinking of long term? I hear you about school district, but it is not bad, right? A lot yeah. of people, a lot of people will say they really think that Salina schools are going to improve because they've got yeah. such a high tax base. Well, yeah, and we haven't seen the new TEA. Yes. Yes. You have to realize, yeah. Yet, so. uh, you have to realize when we when we <laughs> when, when we talk about Texas Education Agency school ratings, there was a lawsuit that went out um, where the TEA is not allowed to release their new findings because they used um, they used criteria that um, that they didn't notify the cities with first. And so all these cities were like, hey, property values are linked to school. So it, so when we talk about TEA ratings, we're talking about 2022. So um, yeah, it's possible that Salina is already a lot better, you know, mm -hmm. um, you All can right. you can still look at like great great schools at org yeah. Nish, mm -hmm. and a um, couple of places like that. Look at the individual schools and get more information about them. Those are more updated. Mm -hmm. This was great. We went through a lot of comments. Yep. Really enjoyed um, chatting with Thanks you guys. Thanks for coming to see us, people. Yes, yes. Hope you brought your drink. If you didn't bring your drink, you know this time bring your drink we'll next get time. One now. Yeah, or just meet us here at six o'clock next Wednesday with a drink, <laughs> if drinking is your thing. But then again, tea is fine also. So, all right. Well, listen, breaking. you guys have a wonderful evening. If you have any other questions, definitely, um, if you're looking to move, our Let's Find Home questionnaire yep. is definitely the best way to reach us. So, right. um, and otherwise, we will see you next week. All right. All see right. you at six o'clock next Wednesday. Good night. Bye.